Somewhere on this walk called life, I lost sight of who I was. My core sense of self-worth and my confidence were in an entanglement, if you will. I was tangled in this web of shame, and I don't really know where it started. I don't really know where it started. It could have been me as an overzealous and curious girl being told to stay out of grown folks' business. Or maybe it was when I heard myself referred to, I mean, she would lose her head if it wasn't attached to her body. Or it could have been the time that I heard someone tell me, don't a man want a woman that can't keep house? Either way, I learned that who I was, as I was, was something I ought to be ashamed of. So I did what any young woman would do when she felt incapable or unworthy. I thought I would just outwork that shame. And so I did. I worked twice as hard. I covered up twice as much. I lied twice as much. And I worked, and I worked, and I worked until one day my body decided it would no longer participate in this facade. And before I knew it, I was a 30-year-old woman, burnt out, drowning in credit card debt, and taking the opportunity to move in with my mom. Hey, mom, she in here somewhere. <laughs> and I was nervous about that move with mom because, I mean, her struggles just weren't my struggles, and I knew about that cluttered, shameful secret I had been hiding. But I just figured I wouldn't be like that this time. And it didn't take long for my mom to clock me, and she let me know that my uh, cluttered, anti-Pinterest boy way of living reminded her of a nine-year-old girl that she once knew, me. <laughs> and I was offended because, I mean, I'm grown, and I got a big girl job and a master's degree. And when my ego calmed down and I sat down with it, I realized that she was right. This was a pattern that had been following me, nine, 19, 29, all defaulted right back here. So it was during the COVID-19 pandemic, I had the opportunity to go to therapy. And through therapy, I went on a self-discovery journey that allowed me to shift the way that I saw myself in the world. And what I learned is that I have been barebacking life with a condition called attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or what some of you might know as ADHD. But what comes to mind when you hear ADHD? Would you say it was a disability? Or maybe just something that was made up because we're all a little ADHD. Or maybe you think about school children that stay in trouble and can't seem to sit in their desk. I'm an educator, so trust me, I know. But you see, those school children, whether they have the privilege of being diagnosed or not, grow up to become adults with ADHD. And those report card comments about excessive talking become interrupting your coworkers and friends in conversation. And those missing assignments become trouble meeting deadlines. And those tardies become chronic lateness, and those messy backpacks and those desks become cluttered, disorganized living spaces. And no, ADHD is not caused by bad parenting, red dye 40, or video games. <laughs> it's a neurodevelopmental condition that affects about 4 to 7% of adults, and most of them don't even know. It impacts the prefrontal cortex of your brain. And not to get our biology class on you, but just think of that area like a bouncer or a secretary. It controls what you call your self-regulatory or executive functioning skills. Those are the things that help you plan and prioritize, organize, start and stop tasks, and even manage your emotions. It's just that in an ADHD brain, sometimes that bouncer is still on break. And the results of that are the symptoms. So sometimes people might have hyperactive symptoms. Maybe they talk excessively, or they always feel like they're on the go, or they're fidgety. Or sometimes people have inattentive symptoms, and those people, their symptoms are a little more nuanced. They might overlook small details, have a skewed sense of time, or lose everyday items like their car keys. Or they're like me, and they have a combined typo. And I can promise you I'm going to do two things, and that's go on a tangent and have a typo. It also makes it hard to memorize the speech, so I thank you guys for sticking with me. <laughs> the problem with that is that we've learned that those symptoms are character flaws, that people with ADHD don't care, that they're lazy, that they're not working hard enough, and that they ought to be ashamed of themselves. So me and my web of shame, we just stayed curious, and it wasn't until I learned about the number one cause of ADHD that I really started to shift my thinking. The number one cause of ADHD is heredity. Hmm, imagine that. This is the brain that I was born with. This is the brain that I was fearfully and wonderfully made to impact this world with. 
And ain't no shame in, in my brain. <laughs> it ain't no shame in my brain. And it turns out that the same reason that I am cluttered and the same reason that I might be chatty or lose focus is the same reason that I'm also creative, innovative, and a very empathetic person. And ain't no shame in my brain. Okay, and I'm from the South, and I grew up in the black church, and we do a lot of call and response in the black church. I think I'm with my people. <laughs> so when I say ain't no shame, I would love if you guys said in my brain. Ain't no shame. In my brain. Ain't no shame. In my brain. And there's no shame in yours either. Just as much as we have different skin complexions and hair types and eye colors, we also have different brain types, different brains, different ways of thinking, innovating, and problem solving, and that is a good thing. And the moment that you realize to own the part of your story that once brought you shame, excuse me, and there's no shame in your brain either. So raise your hand if you've ever gotten caught up in a spider web before. You walk into a spider web, you can feel the impact of that almost instantaneously. And I think of shame like a spider web. And you have to know that that spider web has only as much power as you allow it to have. And the moment that you decide to own the part of your story that began to give you shame, you can take a step forward towards your God-given purpose. And I know firsthand because one time on this walk called life, I lost sight of who I was. My core sense of self-worth and my confidence were in an entanglement, if you will. I was tangled in this web of shame. But it wasn't until I decided to own and lean into my ADHD strengths and just support those shortcomings that I learned that ain't no shame in my brain. Thank you. Woo!